You know, I used to be Mr. Hope. Um, and what I realized is that if there is hope, we have to create it. We're the hope. So if we create hope, there will be hope. But what is hope? What does hope look like? If we talk about Palestine, what does hope look like? What is, is it that we want to see? What is it that we believe in? It's not about one state, two state, because that conversation is a dead, dead end conversation. All of Palestine is a, single, is a single state right now. It's the apartheid state of Israel. And that's how it's going to stay. Unless we do something. Palestinians are doing everything they possibly can using all the means at their disposal, but they are locked up in a maximum security prison, being tortured and killed. So they're obviously, what they can do is limited by the conditions that Israel placed them. And of course, this total support from America and from the West, financial support and, and, and weapons and so on. So what are we gonna do? Are we gonna create hope? Because I think we can create hope and then we have to act in order to see that hope materialize. If we're talking about hope, I think hope looks like, if you're asking me, hope looks like a, an absolute free Palestine from the river to the sea, the dismantling of the Zionist state, just like the dismantling of apartheid took place in South Africa, but that's what's gonna require that we act. It's gonna require that we demand our elected officials start talking about severe sanctions, boycotting Israel, you know, sending the Sixth Fleet to, 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 to call for a, uh, a no-fly zone over Gaza, if that's what it takes. I mean, we have to demand these things because we vote for the, elect for the officials that make the decisions for us. So if we don't act, this is what it's gonna be like. And Al-Aqsa, if, if Al-Aqsa was in danger and desecrated until now, and I went at a couple of what they call tours with settlers on Al-Aqsa, I mentioned it in my, uh, if you go to mikopella.com, there's all my stuff there, but um, you know, I've got some video clips of walking through Al-Aqsa, or what they call a Temple Mound with these settlers, thousands of them. Um, what they call the loyalist, the, the Temple Mount loyalists, which used to be a small, marginal, unimportant organization, now they're calling the shots. They're going to be, they're going to have some holding on to some really important portfolios in the Israeli government. And so, if we thought they were desecrating Al Aqsa until now, wait till they burn it down to to build their temple. And this is, I'm not, I'm talking about imminent danger. I'm not talking about you know anything that's mythical here, or that might happen in in, in some future. Uh, scenario. This is imminent. This is what these guys, people want to do, and there's no reason why they can't do it. Um, and so I, the reality is grim, and 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 it could be hopeless unless we act. It's going to be. It's going to continue the way it's going unless we get up, unless we act, unless we stop waiting for somebody else to do something. And our we have to demand that our elected officials, and I'm talking about everyone from running anybody who is for school board, for city council for county council, for mayor, police chief, I mean, all across the board. They have to denounce Zionism, they have to act against Zionism, they have to demand sanctions, they have to apply sanctions. Israel should not be allowed to participate in the Olympics, in the World Cup, in any sporting, cultural, diplomatic, academic sphere and space at all. That's how we win. That's how we create hope. That's how we make, you know, make hope uh, a reality. But unless we do all that, and unless that happens, there's no hope. So it's up to us.